Okay, so once we started drumming a lot of years back, I don't even remember how. The hardest thing to do was to make that inside smooth cut. Mm -hmm. You know, with, with no rings, no circles, no nothing, perfectly smooth. So I started thinking about finding another way to do it. So I, uh, I used them glass globes. You can get it uh, different places. And then I, I put this uh, different uh, fiberglass and different things on them. And that turns it, then I take it off and do the outside. And I, I end up, I don't have to touch the inside at all. Now I, I did, uh, so what you're going to see is how I make this one, this one, and this one. This one's different than these two. I've also got some, uh, here's one that's partially wood, and then they used to have a product called Bondo with hair, and you'd put it on like this and then turn it, and it would come out like this. So that's how that would work. Did you call it Bondo with hair? That's what it used to be. I couldn't find it. I went looking for it. Tiger hair. Yeah. Now what they have now, they have one with stranded fibers glass in it. So we're going to try that tonight and see if it works. Right, here's another ball I did, same idea. But, uh, I got some, this is basically about illusion. Make it look like something it isn't. And then you can paint and try some different things, some rags, some glazes, some different things. You can get a form an illusion and people won't know it. All right. Uh, I picked this up to show you this one, uh, which is it. But then I noticed everything else on here was an illusion, too. This was, uh, I made these hand grenades for a guy. This is a copy of the King Kong original movie, where they had a hand grenade. And that's how they get King Kong. They throw it. It's got gas in it, and it passes out. In the movie, this is what it looked like. It's not, this is what you would call a fragmented grenade. It would all come apart and kill everybody. But they didn't, they wanted it to look like a grenade. Uh, a gas grenade, it just looks like a big can. So I copied what they had. I made uh, three of them for the guy, and uh, he gave him out his presents, and he had some uh, stills from the movie. So that was a nice project. All right. On uh, this one, the illusion is I made a, a gate closer with an iron cannonball on it. Well, I don't have any iron cannonballs, so I made a concrete cannonball, painted it black. That's the illusion. Okay, on these banisters, it's basically a fiberglass and a heavy rod resin. And then I, uh, with with trowels I made, I kept going over it until I had the molding curve made. It's totally waterproof, but uh, there again, it's not a, too much work that. And then the last illusion is this door was really bad. It faced the west side of the street. The sun ate it up and was neglected for a lot of years. It was a really tall door and it would be hard to replace it. So we put a couple panels in, sanded it down, painted it white. It was as white as this. And then I wood grained it. So you can put that around. Okay, uh, now I'm going to start out, I mixed up this clay for the one thing. If you go, don't buy modeling clay. You go to a store, they'll have, you might have an art section with modeling clay. That would be very expensive. You buy kids clay, it'll come in weird colors, but it works fine. But it's half the price of modeling clay. Now 
this stuff smells a little bit. I have a very high tolerance for odors and stuff. You're some painting. <laughs> yeah. When other guys were passing out, I was still going strong. I don't know if it did me any good. What is it, Robert? <laughs> it's Bondo with a, with a stranded hair in it. Okay. I, I got old pieces of Marlite. I make the bottom of my cabinet drawers with Marlite. And when you come finish, you never have to replace them. It's not structural, so it holds up. I learned this from anybody. So, it's basically truck. I'm self-taught, and uh, you won't be learning it from me. I've made a lot of mistakes, but you learn from your mistakes. Maybe you haven't sucked out. <laughs> so I, the first couple ones, uh, they would uh, stick to the glass. You end up breaking the glass to get it off. So you put a uh, mold release on here, which is gasoline. Now, I don't know if that's good or bad, but it worked. Mm -hmm. now, the reason I have rubber gloves on is because this stuff is hard to get off your hands. You just mix it up until it's all about the same color. Was that, was that a hard one? Yeah. The more hardener you use, the faster it'll set. I want to turn it around. <laughs> you just work at it to get a uniform thickness? Yeah. Do you purposely do it in layers, like uh, a thin layer first and then add on? Well, I would, probably in my own shop, I would have made up a lot more, you know. But I've never worked with this stuff before. So we'll see how it goes. <laughs> How's it different? It dries a lot smoother on the inside. And uh, the other one, look, I got a picture of it on that, uh, when I pass around, it looks terrible when you're doing it. <laughs> it looks hairy. Yeah. Is the first layer sort of set already? No. Now, when it's in this condition, don't worry if I get any on the lathe, it'll come off in a year or two. <laughs>
Now, the first time I did this, it was uh, that baseball. Uh, you can pass that around. And I, I didn't try and center as best I could. I just had it on a block, and I stuck a piece of wood on the bottom. So you see on the bowl, one side thinner and one side thicker. That's because it's a little off center. And uh, some people were, yeah, when I'm done. <laughs> Put a lot of cup. That they're beige balling beige, you know. Approximately what thickness are you going for? Uh, not too thick. I want to make it look like I turned a thin ball. <laughs> the first thing you do after you learn how to turn a little bit is see how thin you can make it. You know, then after that, you start figuring out how can I do it so people won't know how I did it. How do I get rid of the, the screw holes and the the mounting brackets and whatever, so people won't know. And uh, I use it for, I got a stack of these for mixing. Get yourself one of these if you can find one with the razor blade in it. It cleans off your knife and the, everything really nice. Saves you a lot of time. Another thing I do is I, uh, Garbage bags, you, plastic bags you get everywhere. I, this is what I do when I cut them up and use them for putting on your shit that's going to get messy. If, if you use regular wood, then uh, it'll be sticking to the wood. It comes off the bag. Or if I'm doing a lot of glue and I'll put them under there. I blew up two or three pieces of wood together, and a lot of glue, and it's all running all over. But that's all right. All right, now we're going to make this one. is a different method. The the holes were actually a turn piece. So this is a piece of two by four and a little piece of MDF on there. And I turned it. I gave it a couple quick coats of paint to make it somewhat uh, so nothing will stick to it. All right. Pretty high tech. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So this will be your bottom piece. Then the reporter one time was talking to God, and he says, how come you made so many snakes? He said, they're fun. <laughs> That's my only play snake joke. So this is uh, pretty easy to do, very forgiving. You can, when you're done, you can scrape it all off and put it back in the plastic bucket, and it's ready for next time. Is that modeling clay? That's what I call it, but this is kids' clay. It's sold in the uh, Hobby Lobby in different places. Like Play-Doh? No, it's just clay. But if you buy modeling clay, you're going to pay twice as much. Oh, kids play? 
kids, clay. 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 Same thing as modeling clay. You can make things out of it. How does it cure? Huh? How does it cure? Just air dry? Or? Uh, it don't have to cure. It's gonna put. Are you gonna? We're gonna put in a uh, fiberglass mesh over this whole thing. And if it's a little warm, it's even better. It's a little better. Now at this place, now you can either make your tools or you can buy them. The same place. Hobby Lobby or craft store. Okay, just like that one that has three balls in it, it's only going to have one. Uh, now you, you want to put some veining in. Isn't that easier than carving it out of wood? Bill is using the corner of the wire. Yeah. This is actually a clay carving tool. Now, after this is all done, you can cut this down, you can shape it, you can add to it. Yeah, that same way this one. I'm going to send this one around. Yeah. Okay. Now you could do a lot of different things. You could take a, a spoon and just boom, 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 do a hammered finish kind of thing.
Now, after this is all done, you can cut this down, you can shape it, you can add to it. Now you could do a lot of different things. You could take a, a spoon and just boom, 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 do a hammered finish. Kind of thing. Now, is this three, three uh, socket bowl? Is this uh, that same Bondo fiberglass stuff? No. Okay. It seems a little heavier. Well, this this is going to be. Uh, same way you do a Corvette, you get the mesh and you got the rosin. Okay, yeah, we're going to change the outside shape of this. How'd you add a different color? What? Different colors. Like different That's it, way it comes. You buy a block of five pieces, okay. each one will be a different color. Okay. It's just for kids. You buy the other stuff, it might be one color, it's going to be a lot more money. Oh, there. <laughs> okay. Now, you know, Now you're going to pour liquid on this, so you need a rim. You're making your own mold. How many people have heard, uh, it's not worth the tinker's dam? <laughs> you know what that is? Since this. You know, it's the old days when they were forging steel swords and shit. They just dig a hole, pour the hot steel in there, and whatever come out, they beat the hell out of it till it looked like a sword. So a dam it was just a dam in the ground. Where did that piece of history come from? Oh, I know a lot of stuff. <laughs> Were you there? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was. Yeah. <laughs> it was from the Celtic settlements in Iowa. So, Bill, have you ever worked in the model making industry for like uh, movies or for designers or anything like that? I've made a lot of different things for people. Uh, the same idea, yeah. yeah. Uh, one of the things I make is uh, I'll take a piece of wood and turn it like a flower pot, cut it in half, and then screw it to the wall, and people will put flowers, artificial flowers. In. I've had a lot of uh, high-end decorators, big-money homes. 
they asked for impossible shit and we did it. And uh, yeah, I, I, I'd, sometimes I was on a house for over a year, year and a half. And these would be brand new houses. Matter of fact, one of them was uh, the model house in the, in the project of River Ridge. And uh, the people come in, the guy was uh, running WLS. He was a uh, talk radio to Chicago. And they had a deal if he'd come to Chicago, he was in Texas. If he'd come to Chicago and do that thing, they would buy him a house and decorate it. Anything he wanted. I was a year. A year. We did a banister going up, oak banister going up the front staircase. All the banisters, the balusters, they wanted all the beads and coals to be done in gold leaf. Just that little piece going around. We spent a week on it. And then the decorator came out and said, that's, that's a little too bright. Can you mix up some gray glaze and make it look like it's got dust on it? So we went around with little artist brushes, making them look dusty. So yeah, we did anything they wanted. You still a lot of uh, people buy uh, wood paneling, uh, be chestnut or something, and they say, "But my pine doors and my pine woodwork around the windows and everything don't match." So we would paint it and then wood grain it to be chestnut or whatever species they wanted. Okay, I think we're almost ready. So we've got our, our piece done. We've got the, our little dam for this. Now we got to mix up this stuff. And uh, you can get this uh, a lot of different places too, and the price will vary quite a bit. That's basically a resin. Uh, you need you need some cheap throwaway brushes for this. That's the only thing these are good for. I had a spot where I needed a small brush. I didn't have one, so I cut it in half on the bandsaw and taped it up. I got two little brushes. So you can do that. You buy these mixing cups. Uh, they got ounces on the side. Because this is all mixed by the ounce. And uh, leave them get hard. Yeah, but the stuff you don't use, squeeze it a little bit and they'll fall out. And you can use them again. Now this you can also get, I bought this at an auto store because I wanted it right away. But you can get it at uh, Menards under the Bondo label. Uh, Is it always that dark though? Yeah. All right, that's, that's two ounces. And the harder, this is a liquid too. It's 14 drops per ounce.
Pretty close. <laughs> Something. A mixing stick. There's a pencil up there. We had a contest in the Hickory Hills Club a while back. Make something out of a two by four. You, could, you were allowed to use one two by four. You know, that's not the best wood. So I uh, cut it all up and I made a car, cut the wheels, made everything out of it. And then I, uh, I covered it with this. And then a little bondo, it looked like a plastic car. <laughs> so you cheated. <laughs> well, when I, when I started bring, bringing this stuff around to the Chicago club, nobody wanted it. Nobody liked it. Nobody copied it. It was what wasn't wood and a wood color. Yeah. They didn't want it. If it was paint, they didn't want it. Plastic. No, you can't turn it plastic. Now they're good. But you can you can buy a small box of it. You don't have to buy that much. Stay out of the auto parts so I don't kill you with the price. Don't worry about the stuff sticking off. It cuts off real easy when it gets hard. You cut it when it's still a little bit green. Cut off the extra. Yeah, I don't worry about it measuring too much. And you can always add to it. If you see you missed a corner somewhere, you can put some on later. How long does it take it to dry? Tomorrow. Tomorrow? Yeah, probably sooner, but... It'll be a long meeting there tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, 
I've done a lot of uh, repairs and stuff. I've done a lot of Frank Lloyd Wright houses, restored them. And my thing was, tell me what you want, I'll get you there. Don't tell me how he did it. You know, because I got to use what I know. And uh, usually I did all right. But you get some of these people, they want you to do it the way they did it in the old days. No. Anyone giggling yet? Now in my uh, in my house, I had to put a. I built it about twenty years ago or so. I wanted a, 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 a sink around for the sink in my, in my bathroom. I wanted it to look a little different. So I uh, made a plywood, plywood, a big round plywood deal, half, half round. And then it went around on the sides. And then I, uh, I covered it with something like this. And then I marbleized it. Now you got this big, big piece of marble that's about that thick with a sink in it. And it's just hung on the wall and I got one skinny leg coming down in front. <laughs> Did you say it was hung on the wall? No, it's still there. finish this guy and bring it to the next meeting. After it dries, then what are your steps? Well, you're going to cut the edge to get what you want. And then you're going to uh, uh, I'm going to make a back for it. Like this one has a back. But this came off the same way. This is your outside rim with three balls. Now I move the back on it. All right. The back's out the same material? Or? No. Well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I put some cardboard in there to hold the back together. And then you cover the cardboard. And once it's all covered, it's strong enough to last. Yeah. You don't have to use this mesh. You can use an old sweatshirt, t-shirt, anything you want. But uh, make a, a round uh, cover for your radio or something. And the way, uh, so like I said, I used to run a restoration shop. People were doing me a 1932 Zenith radio. You know, can you fix this all up? Yeah, I need two new knobs. So I, I make a couple of molds and make my knobs for the guy. And you can color that, and or you can paint it, whatever you want. But uh, a lot of people had uh, big old chairs from Mexico or someplace lines on them and they have to taste the big one. There's a little bondo and a little sand and a little piling. 
and they had the face back. Uh, so again, I didn't learn from anybody. I just did what I thought it would work. And uh, I need a plumber, though. <laughs> My son's uh, toilet uh, just broke down. He's got one of the dual push button things. And it keeps running. Uh, I haven't been over there yet, but uh, I said, I know how to fix the old toilet. <laughs> I have to see what this is about. But, uh, okay, let's see if we're done cooking over here. Yes. I don't think it stick that good to the grease. Too high, the Vaseline's not there. No, Vaseline's everywhere. There we go. There's your inside of your bowl. And uh, now you can put this on the lathe. That'll fit into a chuck and turn the outside. And uh, you don't have to do the inside. A little paint and it'll look like There's your inside of your bowl. And uh, now you can put this on the lathe. That'll fit into a chuck and turn the outside. And uh, you don't have to do the inside. A little paint, and it'll look like the beige one. But uh, you can make bigger bowls. you got to find a bigger piece. But uh, so. When he bought that glass, it was $5. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. The double since then. But you don't even have to little light sanding on the outside, and you got a nice marbly tight fixture. All right, I'll pass this around. To the <laughs> I found a, a box of wax paper. I use a lot. Old box in, on my shelf. Forty nine cents. <laughs> yeah, should have bought a truckload. I find wax paper is a very nice thing to have in your shop for stuff like this. We want to lay something down where it ain't going to stick. You know, you're going to spray something and you don't want it to stick to the paper and stuff. But a little light sanding, and that looks like a marble bowl. They need the right color. Did you take some pictures of the different steps you go through? Uh, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, I don't even have a... Put your hands together, gang. Yeah. <laughs>